When developing apps, it's very important to separate out your development and production environments. App Flavors allow us to create multiple versions of our app with the same code base, making it easy to create and test new features without the risk of destroying production data. In this video, you'll learn how to create three Android and iOS flavors, development, staging, and production. Development is for you to create new features. Staging is for your team and stakeholders to test out the app before it goes to production. And production is for the end user. You'll also learn how to generate an app icon for each flavor using the Flutter Launcher Icons package and link each flavor to a different Firebase project. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. If you want to learn how to build real world apps with Flutter, check out my courses at launchclub.io. And with that, let's get into it. In a new Flutter project called Flavors Example, the first thing we'll do is create a new file called app.dart. App.dart contains a stateless widget called app that takes in a flavor string. This will be displayed as a title in our app bar, so we know which flavor the app we're running. You can also use the package info plus package to view your app's name and package name. Now let's delete our existing main.dart and create three entry points to our app. Main underscore development.dart, main underscore staging.dart, and main underscore production.dart. All of these files call run app app and pass in the corresponding flavor string. You can add flavor specific code to each main file, such as loading environment variables or enabling app analytics. To run a specific main file, we can type in our terminal flutter run dash dash target lib slash and then the name of the main file. Once we add our Android and iOS flavors to customize app names and icons later on in the video, we'll also have to include the flavor we want to run with dash dash flavor and the name of the flavor. However, there are two problems with this. One, it gets annoying to type this out whenever we need to run a different app build. And two, running this command in the terminal won't allow us to use VS Code's debugger. Luckily, both of these are easily fixable with the launch.json file. At the root of our project, create a launch.json file inside of a folder called .vs Code. We have three configurations, one for each flavor. Each configuration has a name, request, type, program, and arguments. Now when we go to the Run tab, we see our three launch configurations. When we tap Run, we get an error about not being able to use the flavor option, so let's add our build flavors next. Adding build flavors to Android is pretty straightforward. Inside of our app level build.gradle, we add our product flavors for production, staging, and dev. The name of our app for each build is defined in the res value line, and our application ID has a suffix for staging and dev. Our current application ID is com.example.flavorsexample. This means our bundle identifiers will be com.example.flavorsexample for production, com.example.flavorsexample.stg for staging, and com.example.flavorsexample.dev for development. In our Android manifest, we set the Android colon label to at string forward slash app underscore name to set our app's app name. iOS build configurations are more complicated than Android and can only be done in Xcode, so be sure to follow along closely. In Xcode, let's create two new schemes called development and staging that both target runner. Rename the original runner to production. Next, we have to go into the runner project and duplicate the debug, release, and profile configurations for development and staging. Add the dash production suffix to the original configuration. Now let's go into manage schemes and edit the development and staging schemes to point to the correct build configurations. Production already points to our production configurations, which means we don't have to change it. In the build settings of Target Runner, make sure all and combined are selected and search for bundle identifier. Here, we set each configuration's bundle identifier. Finally, we set our app's display name by creating a user-defined variable 
called app underscore display underscore name. Note that if your app display name is longer than 12 characters, the spaces will be removed. We use this variable in our info.plist by creating a new key, CF bundle display name, and setting it to app underscore display underscore name, wrapped in parentheses with a dollar sign. We're ready to add our app icons. I've downloaded three images and cropped them to 1024 by 1024 pixels. Create assets and icons folders and drag your images in. In our pubspec.yaml, let's add the Flutter Launcher Icons package as a dev dependency. This package will generate all of the icon sizes for Android and iOS and put them into the correct folders. We have to create a configuration file for each of our flavors. Each file is named flutter underscore launcher underscore icons dash the flavor name dot yaml and points to the flavor icon in the assets icons folder. Set Android and iOS to true to override the existing flutter launcher icon for both platforms and define the icon image path. We can generate our flavor icons with flutter pub run flutter launcher icons colon main dash f flutter launcher icons asterisk. When you submit your iOS app to the iOS app store, it's important that your app icon does not have an alpha channel so your app doesn't get rejected. We can add remove underscore alpha underscore iOS colon true to the YAML files and regenerate the icons. Android is all good to go. We see the generated icons in the respective folders, but we need to complete an additional step for iOS. In Xcode, we see our three app icons in the Assets folder. Let's go into the Targets Build Settings and search for Asset. Here we set the correct app icon for each schema. I've run all three flavors on Android and iOS, and all three apps have the correct name, app icon, and app or bundle identifier. Every app's app bar displays the flavor string we pass into each main file. At this point, I'm assuming you already have Firebase set up in your project. If not, you can follow along with this video I made covering how to set up Firebase for Android and iOS. In Firebase, create three Firebase projects, development, staging, and production, all with the proper bundle identifiers. We want our development flavor to use the development project, staging to use the staging project, and production to use the production project. For Android, we would normally add our single Google Services JSON to the Android app folder. But because we need to keep track of three different Google Services files, we create development, staging, and production folders. These folders were automatically created when we generated our app icons. Move the corresponding Google Services files into each folder. Our Android app knows which file to refer to when running because our flavor names match our folder names. For iOS, we're going to do something similar and first create a folder called config with development, staging, and production folders nested inside. Move the corresponding Google service info plist into each folder. Now drag the config folder into the top level of the iOS folder in Xcode and make sure to copy the files. When we run our app, Xcode will always look for the Google service info plist in the runner folder. So we need to go to build phases and add a run script that copies the correct Google service info plist to that location when the app is run. Let's rename the script. I got the script from this great medium article that I'll link in the description. Paste the script into the box, and now we're done. We've successfully hooked up our app flavors to different Firebase projects. You learned how to set up flavors in your Flutter project, generate a unique icon for each flavor, and point each flavor to a different Firebase project. Remember to leave a like and subscribe, and for complete Flutter courses, check out my website, launchclub.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.